All right then, welcome back to the news. So we're going to dive into the tripwire story. And to be honest, I say story, there's really not that much here when we really went into it. Here's the basics. All right now, tripwire first, that's games like, well, in publishing, that's games like Chivalry 2, uh, Man Eater. In development, that's the likes of, you know, Rising Storm, Red Orchestra, Killing Floor, right? So, you know, authentic military shooters, and of course, Killing Floor, the, I think one of the zombie games that has really had the most, like, just punch in your weapons, right? It's just sawing things in half of the, the machine gun. It would all feel quite good. And that's why Tripwire did pretty well within its niche. And now they're in a little bit of hot water. Maybe more than a little bit. Here's basically the story, right? John Gibson is the CEO of the company, and uh, he voiced support of the U.S. Supreme Court affirming the Texas um, abortion law. So that is basically what he said. He said, um, yet with so many vocal peers on the other side of the issue, I felt it was important to go on the record as a pro-life game developer. Now, note that's him saying that he personally is a game developer who is pro-life. That is not him saying in an official company capacity that Tripwire Interactive is a pro-life game developer and publisher. So he said that. There's one thing he's definitely right on, yet with so many vocal peers on the other side of the issue, because certainly... There are more people who are quite vocal on the other side of this issue than him. And uh, yeah, I mean, it <laughs> feels a bit weird being like, you know, ratioed, but he certainly, certainly had uh, much of the gaming internet. I mean, Twitter users, of course, um, you know, the various different uh, blogs and news outlets and staff for those outlets, pretty much everyone going after the guy, cutting ties, stuff like that. You had, you know, Corey Barlog and you know, a few other people who are notable developers. Um, as as well, I think Cliff Blazinski said, oh, you know, just unfollow me or something like that. So absolutely an unpopular opinion. I think we, we know that much. And it, of course, stems from the man's personal uh, religious views. And um, if you want a little bit of you know, context and that, maybe how that's uh, impacted development at the company. Um, it has, but seemingly in a, in a small enough way, though it could be a way that could cause some friction with some people. Um, so as an example, well, here's a good quote, I really wanted to keep the language down. You know, within the studio, there are people of various beliefs, and where we got to is keeping it PG-13. This is stuff Gibson said as a part of an interview with Geeks Under Grace in 2016 and that was with rising storm which i believe was kind of like the standalone expansion for red orchestra 2 in the uh, in the pacific front um so yeah he did that now i'd sort of say there you know creatively i i feel like um pg-13 is probably not what uh, you know what a big battlefield um is is like you know i personally quite uh, quite big into the military history so you know it's a creative decision that as an example i would uh, disagree with he does also talk about um basically helping have the christian characters have you know like a, a decent representation in the games stuff like that also are not overly sexual uh, sexualizing female characters and uh, yeah I, I wanted female characters that females would want to play as not characters that male players would want to look at so, like, there's just some examples, I suppose, of, um, you know, how the, how the personal beliefs of uh, the man at the top of the company have impacted uh, the games. Um, now, in terms of other things, he, he said one or two spicy things in the past. Uh, this is one that did sort of get people, um, well, the quote is, I give up, Call of Duty has ruined this whole generation of gamers. Now, your context there is that that is a game team who is working on, like, the Red Orchestra games which are supposed to be like, you know, a little bit more in the mill sim direction. So I think you can see how people working on, you know, on a title such as that may be, you know, I'm not going to say it's the right thing to look down your nose at Call of Duty if you work at a game like that. Certainly, you know, as he says, <laughs> I won't just throw stones, but then he kind of does. So that was like a little bit of a drama that he got himself caught up in. Um, there was also the funny story of uh, the naming of Red Orchestra, where he was brought on to help with America's Army, like the game. And they came up with the name in a planning meeting of America's Army Combined Arms. Uh, but then, once that was over, he immediately posted on the Red Orchestra forum saying that the name should be Red Orchestra Combined Arms. And that prompted him to immediately be fired from the America's Army team. So I guess that's just some uh, funny little context. The other thing then is some music within Killing Floor 2. 
And then it's picked up by Imran Khan. There is, um, well, basically, right, if, so a few of my friends were Christian growing up, and they were into the likes of, like, Skillet. So, you know, Christian metal and Christian rock. So that's been a thing for, for quite a long time. It seems that, uh, well, John had, uh, had his own go at that. They did a, a song called Disunion Reconstructed, which is in Killing Floor 2. And, uh, you know, does have... Uh, you know, does have lyrics like, uh, you know, now when people uh, push until they break, rip children from their womb before they ever had a chance to see their alive look into their unborn eyes. So that is, uh, you know, you could say pro-life content being inside Killing Floor 2. Um, I suppose a lot of people just didn't notice that. Um, but certainly there are people who would potentially play Killing Floor 2 who perhaps knowing that that's in the game would feel less good about playing that, which is obviously every consumer's right to, um, you know, to, to deal with that. There's you know, plenty of people that are going to maybe disagree with the, the founders or whatever of Chick-fil-A, and they're going to not have any Chick-fil-A. And then there's people who are going to disagree with the founders and think, well, you know what? I do want a chicken sandwich, and it's not like it's the staff, you know, flipping burgers fault. So I'm good. You know, pe people are you know, just you know, consumer, right? You've got to have your own ethical considerations. Um, but certainly for a lot of people, you know, this has been over their line. And there's been a lot of people sharing, uh, you know, like you know, screenshots of uninstalling games and, and the like, as the industry is generally dogpiled. So in terms of the non-drama response, because to be honest, it's like, oh, wow, what did Cliff Blazinski say? It's like, that's just kind of industry drama. You know, it's maybe not super important. Um, for the more sort of nuts and bolts news stuff, they did have this. So Shipwright Studios is a work-for-hire developer who've contributed to multiple tripwire titles like Chivalry 2 and Maneater. They are cancelling their contracts effective immediately. Uh, now, it does say, we cannot in good conscience continue to work with Tripwire under the current leadership structure. We will begin the cancellation of our existing contracts effective immediately. Again, existing or you know, current leadership structure. Not to spoil where the story goes, but the leadership structure changes. And then Torn Banner, who are the developers of Chivalry 2, also, you know, they didn't cut ties. Now, part of that is, I mean, cutting ties with the people who have published your game is a little bit different, and I think a little bit more serious than, like, an external contractor. Um like that so i wouldn't necessarily expect them to cut ties but they certainly do you know disavow um you know disavow what uh, what gibson said in their statement and this is all what led to well tripwire points new interim ceo alan wilson as company moves forward um this is a press release from tripwire themselves and they say that uh, gibson's comments are his own opinion they don't reflect tripwire saying that those comments disregard the values of the whole team, uh, their partners, uh, you know, the broader community, etc., and they just go on to talk about the new CEO. And that's basically where the story ends, to be honest. And I think it's a very simple cut-and-dry thing. You can have your, your principles. You have, you know, everyone's entitled to their principles in this case, you know. I've, I've no doubt this is just his sincerely held belief or whatever. Uh, but then a bit of reality comes in and then you have to think, well, uh, in my position as CEO of this company, I could make this statement and maybe, you know, I, I very much want to because uh, it is what I believe in. But if I think about what might happen after I make this statement, would this be bad for my employees? Would this be bad for, you know, my, you know, my sort of duties to the company? Would I be bringing unnecessary harm to the company. And that's where I think most people, when they think about the pragmatic angle, the realistic angle would say, okay, maybe don't do that. Now, I think a lot of people on the other side will say, will maybe agree with that, but then also say, yeah, but does that not create a chilling effect or something like that? Um, I think that is a bit of a discussion that's kind of beyond scope for this because literally what happened is man, man in big position in company makes controversial statement that does not reflect all of company. People who disagree with controversial statement say so, including their own partners. Staff put in, a, in an awkward position. Leadership team put in an awkward position. So, man ends up having to step down 
so that the company does not uh, you know, receive undue harm because of him making a tweet. So really, when you get down to it with this story, man says a controversial thing about a very, very, very hot topic issue. In doing so, he puts those around him, you know, who he works with, in a little bit, uh, well, not a little bit, quite an awkward position. And then you have to say, well, what is more important? Your personal need to share your opinion and to sort of like live your own truth? What's more important, that or the responsibility that you have to all of those people around you? You know, be that their stress at at work, their mental health, um, and, you know, not painting a target inadvertently on their backs. And I think that basically is the push and pull here. That is probably some of what Gibson was thinking Obviously, he went in one direction, and now we've seen how that's all played out. So that's basically the story. There's not really much else to add, so um, that's it. I, I guess you could maybe say that if you know Shipwright do fully pull out, then perhaps that would impact future developments uh, from the company in terms of timescales. But uh, yeah, that's, that's mostly that. So um, yeah, we'll see you next time, hopefully in something a bit more cheery.